occurred to me while making this tutorial for this uh, distorted space backdrop that there was a possibility to create a kind of recursive relationship between Bryce renders and slightly distorted HDRI backdrops and Bryce renders and HDRI backdrops by feeding the output back into the input of the other. So I thought we'd we'll look at that in this video. It's going to need some just basic elements. I'm not going to need the infinite plane, so I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to create a standard Bryce sphere, modify the material just so it's perfectly reflective, and I'm going to copy and paste that. Uh, I'll drag it to one side, I meant to at least anyway and then copy and paste it again and lift it above itself and then move the camera in so that we get a fairly close look at the interaction of reflections between these three objects so I don't know, I'm just roughly positioning the camera and the other thing is I'm going to change the document setup so we've got a one-to-one -one aspect ratio so it'll be suitable if I can get that right there so I can uh, use this to generate my HDRI image from its render. So I'm just looking at these reflections between these three spheres and how they interact with the sky and uh, you can see that interreflections creates a bit of complexity which is what I was looking for. They're just joining this triangle up together just for the look of the thing and uh, if you want to get rid of the black dots then you can increase the uh, maximum ray depth which I'll show you at the end but there's the control there in the render options and uh, that just means that it doesn't reach the end of its reflection limit quite so quickly so just move that out there so that blob doesn't turn out quite as large as it has done by moving it slightly further away from the sphere that one's slightly closer to okay I, I don't want to draw this out too much because uh, the fun will be in, in experimenting with this yourself but I'll just give a quick go and see what happens so I'm going to say that's ready enough for what I want to do. Sky and fog, holding the Alt key down, click on cloud height, turns the clouds off, and roll the sun roller ball around. So we've got the sun in the background somewhere. This bright line here is the horizon. That's the fog causing that. And that's just a bit of the light from the sky showing through. I'm going to choose darker sky to ch just uh, reduce the intensity of that light in the background slightly and lower the sun so you can see in the preview here I want, I want a reddish tint for this I think so there we go that is going to be my first render so I'll let that render out completely remember to do it all in one go if you want to export as a HDRI image so file export image select HDR and I'll call that one and save that the next step is to go into the Skylab image based lighting tab use image open and just open the image you've just created and then uh, add that as a backdrop we can do render in scene to get it from the camera view and then I'll just rotate it an arbitrary amount and this image in the backdrop will now be being reflected by the spheres and that will have the effect of creating uh, more complexity in the scene so this is uh, added a bit of complexity now in a position to re-enable the haze which was turned off automatically as a, as a result of loading the HDRI image and I'll change the colour of that I don't know to a deep red colour so you can see these red lines have now appeared if I thicken that up those will become more exaggerated and then what I can do at this point is save that again as a HDRI image so I'll let that render out and export image and I'll save that as two and then go back into the Skylab image based lighting tab and open two and then again I can choose to either roll that around or leave it where it was I'll leave it where it was it doesn't really matter it's all open to experimentation check out of there again the haze has been disabled as a result of loading the HDR image so I'll re-enable it and I'll make it I don't know, a golden color now so I've got the the red and the golden color one and uh, to get rid of this black lines that is a result of the bottoming, bottoming out of the rays as they have the interreflections you can just go render options and then just increase the maximum ray depth I'll double it to 12 it'll uh, make the, the render a little bit slower to render out but as you can see because we're only working with very simple objects and uh, HDRI image the the renders complete so that's a very quick way of creating a complex abstract image by 
creating HDR images and feeding them back in and adding them back into the sky and then changing properties in the sky. You could you could take it further and use custom sky for example and then you'd have the option of changing things like the sun glow colour and uh, and various other aspects of the the sky to create more dramatic effects. So you can see already from the preview that changing the sun glow colour in this instance or moving the sun round You've got all these uh, other options will create different effects within your backdrop or you can even change the camera position and uh, capture the image from another side and then load that in as your HDRI backdrop and just keep adding complexity we can see you can start from a very simple scene and things get complicated very quickly so there you go there's a quick idea to make abstracts using the uh, export as HDR feature in Bryce 7.1 Pro